न्यूज फर्स्ट फेस टू फेस विद जयमाल रत्नायकर A very good evening and welcome to this evening's edition of Face to Face coming to you live and direct from our News First studios here in Colombo as always for the News First team I am Jaimal Ratnayaka The freedom of expression the right to peaceful assembly are some facts that have been enshrined in the constitution as fundamental rights that the people of Sri Lanka are entitled to but last Thursday if you may recall a group of peaceful protesters at the liberty roundabout were harassed by another group of masked men and with me tonight is one individual who was part of that peaceful protest who was also harassed by that unruly group she has already been on face to face once more but today we have invited her specifically to talk about the decadence the moral decadence in sri lanka and also the declining rule of law and the selective application of law here in sri lanka so my guest tonight is dr azanta pereira environmentalist and as she herself has admitted a civil activist also now <laughs> yes. thank you very much for joining yeah, me this evening dr pereira <laughs> so uh, let's get the ball rolling discussing <laughs> what transpired last thursday we saw even uh, on our news bulletins we aired the news of your peaceful protest group mm. being harassed yes. the placards that you were carrying were removed they were ripped up by these masked men who appeared suddenly out of nowhere during uh, the protest at the liberty roundabout and this is a peaceful protest that has been taking place for quite a some time, time yeah. since 2022, 2022 if my memory serves me right yeah. dr prera so yeah. can you just walk us through me and the viewers mm. of what well, happened because you have first hand experience just yes. walk us through what happened well basically uh, we were supposed to be at the site around 5 o'clock right and uh, i got there around 5:15 mm. and as i was coming into the area uh, from <coughs> the uh, junk colpit junction right i saw there were policemen mm. so as usual i always talk to them before i go before we start our protest we normally talk to them right so uh, i just said hello how are you and they smiled and so i walked off and i went to the area where we were protesting right and uh, then we each took a placard and mm. you know we wanted to uh, start the protest right so all of a sudden uh, from from this side of my eye you know i just saw um, a group of people suddenly appeared mm. maybe about 25 to 30 people right. all of a sudden mm. were standing at the uh, the zebra crossing right you know to cross over to our side mm. so i was thinking maybe they are also protesting over something else and you know a little surprised by you know sudden appearance and then i looked to look at the side where the police were mm. standing and to see the policemen were moving out right. they were walking away to us are le gaha mande so i was thinking what on earth is going on because they totally left us there alone mm. and they all seems to be moving away mm. by that time these people have crossed over and they were like kind of walking behind us and all of a sudden they started to come near so i didn't know what i mean who they were mm. they were masked i mean they were mm. wearing literally some were wearing masks and some were have covered their faces with cloth right and then they came very close and uh, and i was startled i mean like i unusually close right. they came very very close to you mm. as if though enough to touch you right and i just moved away and i you know was surprised by mm. it and then he said to me you know he said why are you protesting so i said because of the situation in the country mm. we want to raise our voices about you know various issues and right. issues and that's what we are doing mm. and then he uh, he kind of started to say there are no petrol queues there are no you know issues in the country we have enough to eat we have enough money and uh, there nobody is suffering in this country right. so why why are you protesting there's mm. nothing to protest about mm. so then they started to really pull the placards out right 
and was very aggressive and if you really looked at them they looked extremely aggressive mm. and they were very angry right you know and we could not understand as to what was going on and mm. then they started to complain about the national flag being there they said you have no right to use the national flag while you are protesting so they they literally walked over and you know and and in that time i also saw that they were also pushing around fatima right. and i was really frightened by that because you know here here are people around me and mm. here are people around her man handling her man and and it was really scary mm. but at the same time some others came over and they were removing the placards right so we were really questioning as to what on earth are you doing i mean here we are standing there and peacefully protesting who are you kind of a thing mm. and then uh, the worst scenario was that we felt that we we were left totally alone there by the police right so it dawned on me at that moment the police have deliberately moved out and left us alone to these people mm. so we didn't know what to do at that time except to try to verbally say to them don't come anywhere near us yes. because they were trying to touch us and they were coming too close mm. and i have never experienced that in my life mm. did they seem inebriated did they seem that they were in their proper conscience no no they mm. were they looked totally drug addicts right I mean they they the way they talked they were drug addicts mm. you know they were they they kind of uh, the way they behaved very child child like mm. you know they were not in their senses right. and that scared us even more mm. so what fatima and the other two ladies who were there and the gentleman did was we took all these uh, placards together as right. much as we can mm. and we moved to the island the okay. center yes. island because we felt that is where the police are standing okay. and we have every right to go and stand there right. so by the time we went there mm. we, they all came there right they followed and they you. were trying to push us around i mean they were they were literally touching us and okay. which we hated mm. so i kept on saying don't touch me right. don't touch i mean even when they were going near fatima i said don't touch her right. you know don't do that So then I told Fatima look if we are standing mm. they are going to touch us they are going to continue to do this so let's sit down mm. let's just sit where we are yes. because if in that sense they have to really everybody would see when mm. they are touching us and trying to pull us up mm. so by that time I thank the the media mm. who was around social media and the media from here you know they were there and 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 seriously you know you, they 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 were standing there and with their cameras on and that helped us to feel safe right because they would not do anything to harm us right. you know when they see that the that the cameras are on mm. and uh, and that helped us but it went on for a long time while we were seated there they came and sat next to us mm. and literally touching us mm. again so i kept on shouting and said don't touch don't come near mm. I mean who the heck are they I mean you know forcefully coming close by and mm. then they are shouting at us and saying go home and then they start abusing abusive words mm. like you are women who been thrown out by your husbands right. and that's why you are on the street mm. you know and then they started to throw money at us and say how much do we have to pay you and then they kept on saying you know things like uh you know uh kind of you know i mean very abusive right, you know very saying degrading that statements. why should we be interested in you what parts do you have i mean those were really verbally abusive words mm. you know they were they it was such a yucky situation but right. i i mean literally what I, all what i could do was scream yes and now the second thing i could do was shout right. and and then i kept on saying don't come near right. you keep your boundaries you have no right to come near us around what time did this happen uh, dr this Sarira? was around i started Late to happen around 5:20 right so if if my memory serves me correct and if i am aware of uh, the traffic situation on mm. a typical thursday evening there should be at least one or two no, there was police a officers there was a right. fire day okay so But, and the traffic police was also gone okay I so mean, the police the, the, magically the, disappeared the, fu- the funniest part was mm. even the traffic police right. have left okay 
and then you called the police once ah, more Chiranta to inform of the situation. Says that he called the police, right. uh, and because I we saw, saw through our visuals that a senior official of the police did arrive at the scene. What was his response to the okay, situation? Okay, so he, he he walked. He got off the. We saw a vehicle stopping. He got off the vehicle. He co came over, and at that time we were trying to tell him, mm. you know, and and you know how frightened we are and and what the situation is. He didn't want to listen. Right. He did not even bother to talk to us. Mm. All what he wanted to do was to get rid of those guys. Right. So he he literally went to those people and tapped, you know, tapped on their backs and right. said, "You need to go." And my question was, they have. Abused us verbally, physically, and yet the the I I assume he's the OIC. Mm. He comes over and sends him home. Right. I mean, literally to say, okay, now you've done your job, you can go home, okay. and I'll take care of this situation. Mm. I mean, what a bad show is this, you know? And mm. he didn't even ask us as to what happened. He right. didn't bother, and he even went to the extent of saying, mm. he said. Well, it looks like there was an argument between you and them. That's all. Right. You know, and mm. and to be very frank with you, at that time we were totally surprised, disappointed. Mm. You know, and and uh, we were, I mean, I mean, tormented. I mean, we we didn't know what we what were to supposed to mm. do. And I mean, I really thank God because all these uh, friends from Aragale, mm. when they saw the live videos, mm. they started to come okay. and they all came one by one. The Aragale friends, mm. they all started to come and then they said, you know, we are here now. Mm. You don't have to worry about it. And what should we do? We didn't want to go to the Kolupitiya police station right. because you know we knew mm. they are behind this. I mean, right. even right now, I would say they are totally behind this. Right. They knew that these people were coming. Mm. They were they were just standing there, you know. Suddenly, when they saw these people were coming, mm. all what they did was they left us aside and they went back to their station. You right. know, they were lit. I mean, I believe it was pre-planned. Mm -hmm. So they they left. They left us to these people, mm. and later on, I saw that they were armed. The very man who came and spoke to me, right. who was very standing very close to me and asking me to move, mm. right? And even when I was on the ground, mm. somebody who was kneeling down there, he was armed. Right. You so know, and it's a scary thing. Mm. I mean, I I am happy that I control myself. I did not. Shout at yes. him as such, mm. uh, or or do anything because he could have hurt to me. To aggravate the situation. Yeah, he mm. could have easily hurt me. So I believe they came with the motivation to hurt us mm. uh, because they wanted to put fear on all the people who are protesting in Sri Lanka at the right. moment. Because if one person gets hurt, mm. then there'll be lesser crowd coming to protest, right. and that's what that their intention was. That. So, but Dr. Pereira, one question. Uh, an obvious question that would pop up in one's mind is this is a protest that has been happening for over a year yeah this is a protest that happens on thursdays and also on sundays we've seen civil activists uh, protesting in tibrigasya mm. but why now all of a sudden well i believe the reason being now that they have brought this law uh, the online bill online you know, safety bill uh, yeah i i believe that they want to make sure they go another step ahead right um, okay, so they have now the, the 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 you know that policy in place right now. Mm. So what they think is okay, they are not going to take much notice of it. Mm. So let's now do it practically. Right. We are going to get them out of these places. Mm -hmm. We are going to stop them from coming. We are going to put fear. Right. We are going to bring aggressiveness on them. Mm. We are going to bring a, a thugs on them mm. so that they'll be so fearful. Mm. And if one of them get hurt, the rest will not come. Right. You know. And I believe this was their picture. This mm. was their what they wanted. But one thing I'm ha so happy about is Fatima was sitting right next to me and the other two ladies. None of us got up. Mm. We just sat there. And we said to each other, "We are not getting up till six o'clock. Right. That's our time. From five to six is the time that we are protesting. Mm. We are not getting up and giving up. Mm. We did it for the sake of the rest of the people who are going to be protesting in this country. We will not, you know, we we are protesting 
not because we are angry with someone mm. we are not because we want to destroy the country mm. we are protesting on behalf of the people of this country and we are we are we believe that there are there are there's so much injustice happening in the mm. country there's so much wrong happening in mm, the right. country and and there are so many decisions which are not being taken in the country mm. and so we we want a beautiful country mm. we want a glorious country and we are fighting for that right you know i don't know what the government is doing mm. i'm not interested in what the government is doing mm. right now but we ourselves mm. who have been in the aragale who have fought that good fight mm. and we are not giving up yet right we have not achieved the targets of the aragale mm. and we will fight that good fight until we bring justice to this land mm. you know yes and justice is that beautiful word we want to have in mm. this so country. what sort of what sort of progress have uh, the police made i'm sure you did lodge a complaint with yes. the sri lanka police regarding this matter yes. and even today you went and submitted a complaint to the police headquarters mm. and another set of civil activists went and submitted a complaint to the human rights commission of sri lanka exactly. so what sort of progress uh, have the police made okay, so, so far okay so we went to the kolubite Kol- police station mm. after mm. we calmed down a little bit and yes. after our minds were kind of like at least a little bit better yeah, yeah. so we walked into the police station and and uh, i wanted to give a statement okay so i d- i sat down mm. where so when we were walked into the police station mm. every officer in the police station kept on telling me don't you want to meet the oic right so i said is there any reason that i should meet, meet the, OIC? the oic right because i want to make a complaint mm. and i am not interested in meeting the oic i am not here to ask for favors right. i am not here to discuss mm. i just want to tell mm. what happened on that road and that's it right just write it down mm. you know mm. so then eventually they gave, they they gave me an officer who sat down there he asked me to sit down here then he asked me for my name he asked me for my address one thing i noticed was every time he was sitting down and trying to write something mm. somebody calls him right he gets called he mm. goes out okay. and then he comes back again it happened about His attention four, was diverted times. somebody mm. was calling him and giving him instructions mm. which is very sad mm. you know and then he eventually sat down there and then he asked me what is your name where do you live so after i've said that then again someone called him mm. he came back this time and then he said i'm really sorry i can't take your statement so okay. i said why why then he said to me only a woman mm. could take your statement he said we have this policy in the police stations mm. when a woman comes to give a statement a complaint right. make a complaint mm. that she can only do that in front of a police a female police officer i've never heard that before I have I myself have during the Aragale time also mm. gone and made complaints in the police station mm. right in front of uh, fear male police mm. uh, you know officers. officers and I don't know what happened so then uh, me and Fatima were asked to sit and wait mm. so in that meantime Imran was giving his, his evidence he was you know giving his statement so we were waiting for the police uh, we meant to come mm. and then two female policemen came mm. and they they looked at us like this and said ah are these the two right we were shocked to the brim i mean like you know how could you talk to us like that yeah. are these the two hmm. and i was so shocked i didn't know what to think and then you know then uh, the policeman who was writing the taking the statement you know he said oh they'll come a little later you just have to wait they have some work they went away they never came back for half an hour we were just waiting there waiting for them to come eventually when we realized it's not going to happen and it was getting dark mm. and we were already shocked and right. you know a little bit uh, tormented i mean we were our minds were not working so well at mm. that time mm. because we were really frightened in mm. some sense even though we showed that we were courageous women yes. <laughs> women you know but there was a sense of fear there was a fear because mm. they were nasty and they we i knew for sure they can do anything to you mm. given if the if the sirasa uh, media person was not there if the youtube channels were not there we something drastic would have happened to us right and and we would have ended up in the hospital 
we were so sure of that mm. you know and it was so obvious and you know because of that we were so fearful and uh, you know and and basically uh, you know i mean that's why we, we when we went to the police station also we were still very frightened mm. you know and uh, some i mean uh, to be very frank with you i i, I don't wish that this uh, this sort of thing should ever happen to anyone right you know and then what we did was after we've given the statement we went away and uh, then very next day mm. uh, when we realized that they did not take our statements right our statements were added on to imran's statement and they only wanted to mention mm. there were two females there right i said no way mm. you write down my name in black and white mm. right mm. i said do you write it down yes because i want uh, the statement to carry the fact that i was there and we were all tormented mm. i i want it to be written down so then they wrote down our names right. very reluctantly mm. you know it was yes. so they were trying to put it under the carpet and forget about the whole thing yeah. and i believe that's why they wanted us to meet though i see you know mm. i mean oic would have come up with this story mm. and then eventually would have got you know it would have been forgotten but then because of that we mm. went to the human rights commission the right. next day right. we went to the human rights commission and we explained about the situation and then we made a complaint there mm. uh, then what we thought was this was really a distress to the women mm. Me and Fatima went through something very, very bad. She been a Muslim lady, all covering herself, mm. you know, and yet men were trying to touch her. That was so bad. Mm. I was so hurt by it. Mm. You know, I was deeply hurt right. by the fact that when when they were trying to touch her, I screamed. I kept on putting my hand like this and said, "Don't touch her! Don't touch her!" Mm. You know, I was more fearful for her. Then for myself for because I felt that they were coming so close to her mm. and she told me that when they came and lied on the ground mm. they were lying on the ground literally lying on her right how could these things happen mm. in sri lanka you know and even the media was there but yet they went to that extent so imagine if the media was not there what right. would happen so we went straight mm. to the you to know the women's uh, bureau whatever okay. they call it in the uh, headquarters mm. we went there we made a complaint there but as soon as we walked into that place the lady in the receptionist mm. you know what she told us she said why did you come so we said there was this incidents and we wanted to make a complaint mm. then she said well we can't take your complaint Mm. also if you know the names of the people who were there mm. if you know where they live right then you can make a complaint I see. but without knowing who they were without being able to recognize them you cannot make a complaint we said what mm. <laughs> you know yes. both of us were like shocked mm. what and then we said no that's not our job i'm not a police woman do yes. i look like a police yes. woman i'm not dressed like a police woman i don't carry weapons like a police woman that's the that's the job of the law enforcement authorities exactly. to figure and out who they are exactly why should i a normal woman on the street mm. you know go and catch these people right. why should i be given that task mm. so what what is the job of the police then mm. so we said no no we we know who they are mm. i mean we have now been informed by so many people who love us you know they are doing their own investigations right. they have already found out who they are mm. where in which watte they are living right. everything is disclosed mm. and they even told us their nicknames right. everything has been said but we do not want to tell the police those things mm. you go and find it yourself yes because they know it because they are also their friends mm. why should i talk about their friends mm. they know them very well it's very ironic uh, dr pereira that you mentioned you felt traumatized by the very people who are supposed to protect sri lanka's general public because recently the minister of public security said that after operation yukti was launched it has brought the people closer to the police the people have more confidence in the police but no. what you are saying is completely countering that point no, don't no. you think i i am to be very frank with you 
I have lived in this country for such a long time. Mm. I have lived abroad for nearly 25 years of my life. This was the worst experience that I had and I don't want anyone, mm. a single woman in this country to go through what me and Fatima went through. I will not allow that. And that's why Fatima and I are fighting this fight. Mm. We are going to fight it for the sake of the women of mm. this country, you know, because if it happens to us, Fatima was so desperate, she kept on telling them, you know, look, you know who she is? Mm. She's a prophet. And then they said, who cares about who they are? I mean, they were under drugs. Mm. They did not care because they were so much under drugs. And, you know, for them, it didn't matter. I mean, this was a scary thing. So, mm. uh, you know, and then we eventually today we went to the police headquarters. Mm. Now, I don't believe anything is going to happen, but at least we made complaints in the places where we should do that. Uh, the constitution of this country, the law of this nation mm. says that we have every right to make complaints. Yes. We have every right to seek assistance, yes. you know, mm. and we are going to go to any extent mm. to get the legal help that mm. we deserve mm. because the reason being this is a very important case in the history of Sri Lanka where peaceful protesters we didn't say a word we were just standing there mm. on the you know on the payment we didn't say a single word we didn't say Jayaveva we didn't say Aragale to Jayaveva mm. we didn't say a single word we were just standing there mm. and a group of men comes along and the police give them all authority mm. to do whatever they want to and they, the, uh, the, the police walks off. So I firmly believe Deshabandhu Tennukon has a lot to say. Mm. He has a lot to answer. Tiran Alas has a lot to answer. Mm. He's talking about Yukti. I want Tiran Alas to study that word justice mm. again and again and again. Mm. And I, if, if need be, go back to the very school that you have built. Go and sit with the young children mm. and you ask the teacher who is teaching your children what Yuktiya is. Then you will understand that you, are, you have not done justice to women like us. Right. You, know, he, you can't just use a word, mm. a loose word. Yes. Yuktiya, Yuktiya for who? Mm. It's Ayuktiya, yes. not Yuktiya. Mm. Certainly. So those were the very candid and very explicit uh, matters that transpired last Thursday and Dr. Pereira was also a victim of it and we sincerely hope that uh, justice is served to you and your friends who were uh, very wrongfully intimidated and also harassed uh, last Thursday Dr. Pereira. Unfortunately that is all the time we have for face to face this evening. I just Thank want you. to say one yes, last word. Certainly. I want the country to know mm. I don't hate anyone. Oh, I am not doing this out of hatred for the people mm. who harassed us. I am. Uh, we have already forgiven them because they are human beings mm. and they can do make mistakes. But for the sake of the country, for the for the for the health of this nation, mm. for the protection of the women of this nation, mm. we need to go through that and we need to arrive at justice. Right. So that is. Those are the final remarks by Dr. Zanta Pereira. As always, thank you very much for joining me this evening and tonight. With all of the matters we discussed, I wish to leave our viewers with a quote by the uh, Greek visionary Aristotle. He says, "At his best, man is the noblest of all animals. Separated from law and justice, he is the worst." Thank you and good night.